when I used to work in corporate, one of the many jobs that I had involved setting up feeds, databases, and stuff on the back end for an equity trading company, right? Really large company. I'm not going to mention the name, but uh, it's, it was an equity trading bank, so to say. And in the back end, one of my jobs was to set up tickers, right? So we were subscribed to Reuters, we were subscribed to Bloomberg and a variety of other sources. And periodically, usually once a week, we'll get this massive file, this database file from the companies and we would run inserts into our own databases. The reason why we would do that is so that our traders, the software that they're using, would have access to the instruments that are newly added or would no longer have access to instruments that have been deleted from the stock exchange. So basically, this was an update that we ran to clean up the system so that if an instrument was no longer available, say, I don't know, Apple had been removed from the stock exchange, then our software wouldn't be trying to trade Apple stocks. I don't know, if say BlackRock had a new ETF, exchange tradable fund, this would need a ticker and an instrument that is tradable by banks and organizations that have software that have to trade on the exchange. Now, for tickers that are removed, these are usually done around the same time as the tickers are removed because you want to be able to trade those instruments up onto the point where they're removed. But if something is going to be set up in the near future, then usually these things are done in advance. Now, each organization has their own time scale. So we used to do it months in advance because we were quite a large organization. Some organizations would do it weeks in advance, some days in advance, right? But even before we got the file, whoever is responsible for creating those tickets in the first place in the stock exchange, they have to set it up months ahead of time so that everything is ready to go. So say, for example, there was an ETF instrument that was being set up by BlackRock, then months ahead of time, this would happen. The instrument would exist. It would be assigned resources in the database. It would be assigned all the values that it needs to have so that all the exchanges and all the programs and all the companies can plug into it. And come trading day, everything runs smoothly. So that's all happening in the back end. That's the boring technical stuff that's happening in the back end. Now, in the front end, none of this stuff is necessarily happening yet. In fact, there are many instruments that are set up. They never actually get to be traded because something happens along the line. In the past couple of days, we've seen the pump that has ensued in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies because somebody published the news that the BlackRock Bitcoin spot ETF uh, instrument or ticker has been put into the exchange. Of course, because of the frenzy and the anticipation and everything, everyone lost their minds. It caused a massive pump. And then something happened. Apparently the ticker was removed, maybe because in response to the overreaction by the media and, you know, Bitcoin enthusiasts and everybody, someone said that they removed the ticker from the system. Now, I can't verify that because I didn't actually see it removed. I don't know if that's what caused the dump that came afterwards or what, who knows. But the point is, there seems to be, it seems to have been added, removed, and now it's back again, apparently. Now, I haven't verified any of this added, removed, back again thing, but it wasn't actually a new addition anyway. This ticker had been in there apparently since August, which would make sense. August is only two months ago. So that is within the time period that companies would start to get ready if a new exchange traded fund is going to be set up sometimes next month, December, January, we would be preparing now. So while it is actually fantastic news that this instrument showed up in that file, it is not as imminent as they've made it, right? But because there's so much frenzy, so much anticipation, everyone went mad, it created a pump, and everyone got panicked again, dump, oh, is this fake news or isn't it? The truth is, in the crypto world, we are used to things happening very quickly, very suddenly, and a huge amount of volatility. Things going up, down, 10%, 20%, 50%, 100%, 400% pumps. In the real world, in the stock market, in government, in regulations, in, in, in uh, legislation, in the courts, and things move a lot more slowly, they're a lot more methodical. There's companies and establishment institutions are conglomerates that move at snail's pace, making sure that everything works. We used to have a saying back in corporate 
that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we would have legacy systems that were decades old, churning away in the background, totally inefficient, but they were getting the work done. And as long as they were working, we wouldn't fix them. And things move that slowly in corporate. So things being set up now is actually absolutely awesome news that they are getting ready for it, but it isn't as imminent as you might think, or the media is making it sound, which is why we're getting these sort of fake pumps, overreactions, and people rush into press to try and get the first views and first clicks. So I am absolutely delighted by the news. I don't necessarily have any FOMO per se, because I realize that we still have a fair way to go before the first ETF actually happens. Having said that though, having said that, in this industry, anything may just happen. We might just hear even two minutes after I've uploaded this video that somehow the SEC has approved it and boom, everything goes to the sky, everything goes to the moon, which is why I always say this is not financial advice. Do your own research and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.